Welcome to Toyota Time with Timmy the Toolman and Sean. Today, what we're going to show you how to do is test and clean an IAC valve. An IAC valve stands for idle air control. So on a fuel injected engine, when you're at idle and you're not pushing on the gas pedal, the throttle plate is closed. Here's a throttle body off my 2004 runner. And if you see in there, that's the throttle plate. When I turn this part of the throttle body, this is the part that connects to the throttle cable. This opens up the throttle plate to give your engine more air. On a electronic fuel injected engine, you don't need to press the gas pedal like you used to have to do on an old carbureted engine. With a carbureted engine, it had two throttle screws, one for the cold idle and one for the hot idle. So if you still have a carbureted engine or you're as old as me and you remember starting your engine that had a carburetor, you'd have to push the gas pedal and that would set the cold idle screw into position to where it lets more air into the engine so it will run when it's cold. And then when it warms up, it sets back to the hot idle position and then it idles normally. When an electronic fuel injected engine is idling, the throttle plate is closed, right? So the engine needs to get its air from somewhere and that's where the IAC valve comes into play. If you look down in here, there's a hole right here on the front side of the plate. The idle air control knows to open based off of different sensors. One can be the coolant temperature sensor. Another could be the throttle position sensor. Another one could be the AC switch because you know how when the AC is on and you're at idle, the idle is higher because you're now turning the compressor. It needs to idle at a higher speed. So there's various sensors that are going to control the opening and closing of the IAC valve. So again, you have a port right here in front of the plate. And then when you turn it around, you can look down in here and you can see there's a port that exits the back side of the throttle plate and that's how your engine gets the air it needs to run. The IAC valve just doesn't open under idling conditions. It also opens up under deceleration. So say for instance you're at highway speeds, you took your foot off the accelerator but your RPMs are still kind of high and they haven't reduced back down to an idle. Your engine still needs more air as the RPMs are still high and so the IAC valve will open up to give your engine the air it needs under deceleration. There's three reasons why I can see you doing this job. Number one, you just want to clean it out. You plan on doing a job like the valve cover gasket job and you know you're gonna have the throttle body off the engine and you're going to take advantage of that by doing some cleaning of the throttle body and you wanna clean the IAC valve at the same time. The second situation is you have some type of problem with your idle. Maybe the engine is running really rough at idle, maybe barely idling or maybe it's stalling because that little door on the IAC valve isn't opening like it should. Or maybe you have a really high idle because when it's supposed to be closed, it's all the way open, stuck open. So that could be another situation. These are the reasons why you would be wanting to test the IAC to make sure it's working properly. So let me talk about a common problem that happens when guys work on their rigs and they clean the throttle body out. Say for instance, this is all black and gunked up with a lot of carbon built up and they spray throttle body cleaner all inside here and take a look where gravity is gonna allow all that junk to drop into. It's gonna drop right down into your IAC valve and gum it up. So this is where people have problems that they sprayed all the cleaner in there and let the junk drain down in there. What I would recommend when you're cleaning this while it's still on the engine, spray some throttle body cleaner onto a clean rag and then wipe it in there. Don't let all the runoff just drain down in your IAC and dirty this thing up. The only situation I could see you doing that is if you plan on disconnecting the IAC anyways and cleaning it then I guess it's okay to let it drain down in there, but better to just not let it drain down in there. I would take the throttle body off the engine, 
turn it upside down and spray it. And this way, none of the dirty runoff is gonna end up dropping into your IAC in this orientation with the IAC pointing upward. And then you'd wanna clean the backside too, just like this with the IAC pointing upward. To start off this job, we're first gonna do some tests with the throttle body still on the motor. And then after that, we're gonna disconnect everything we need to disconnect to take the throttle body off the engine. And then we are gonna disconnect the IAC valve from the throttle body and do another test. And then once we finish that test, we're gonna show you how you can clean it out with some throttle body cleaner and then get it back onto the throttle body with a new gasket and then get the throttle body back onto the motor. We're gonna use the factory service manual as a reference and we'll be showing you the pages we're using as we do the job. The parts we bought for this job is we got a new IAC valve gasket. There's the part number. You can see what the little gasket looks like. I bought a new throttle body gasket that goes in between the throttle body and the plenum. That's what it looks like. You need some throttle body cleaner so you can clean out your IAC and you can clean out your throttle body. There's one special service tool we bought for this job. It's a terminal connector for the diagnostic port on your engine. It's made by this company called Wits End that makes a lot of nice little handy tools. So I'll put a link in the video description. So if you wanted to buy one of these, you can get one for yourself. So now let's go to the engine and talk about what we're gonna do first. Okay, like we said, we're gonna use the factory service manual as a reference to do all these tests. The first test that the factory service manual says to do is to inspect the IAC valve operation. And the conditions you need is you need your engine at the normal operating temperature. You double check that the idle speed is correct. You have your transmission in neutral and you have the air conditioning off. Since I'm at a slant in my driveway, I also have the parking brake set firm and I have a couple wheel chocks behind my rear wheels just so the vehicle can't go anywhere with my transmission in neutral. The next thing the factory service manual says to do is using a special service tool. I'm gonna use this tool that I described at the beginning of the video made by Wits End and I'm gonna connect the TE1 and E1 terminals in the diagnostic port on the driver's side of the motor. It's interesting to note that in the factory service manual, it looks like they have the diagnostic port transposed. They show the cap on the diagnostic port opening from the back towards the front, but in actuality, it opens from the front towards the back. So you have to notice that. Also, when you lift the lid, you will see that the terminal connectors are labeled on the inside of the lid. If you get yourself a flashlight, you can illuminate the inside of the cover and you can see the terminals labeled. So now I'm gonna lift up the diagnostic port. It's right here bolted to the plenum on the driver's side of the motor. So you just lift up this tab and pop it up. It might be hard for the camera to pick this up, but this is just like a little schematic that you would see on a fuse box telling you what terminal is what. If you look at it, you'll be able to figure out the orientation, these ones right here being the dead giveaway because they're so much different shaped than the other ones. By looking at it, this terminal right here is the E1, and then this middle one right here is the TE1. And these are the two terminals we have to join to do this test. So I already test fitted this wits end terminal connector. The connector fits really tight, but it does slide in. I'm gonna plug one side in right here, and it goes in this orientation. Basically, the blade of the connector goes perpendicular to the black slot. And when you get your own eyes in here, you'll see how it needs to be. So I'm gonna slide one side in, and then I'm gonna slide the other one in. Okay, so now I have the terminals TE1 and E1 connected. 
I already warmed up my engine to operating temperature, but it's been sitting a little bit and it's a cold day in California, so I might have to let it warm up a bit. If you have a scan gauge or maybe you have a Bluetooth OBD2 reader sending information to a phone app like Torque Pro, then you can know without a doubt you're at the normal operating temperature. If you don't have a scan gauge or a phone app, then you can just base normal operating temperature of where your temperature gauge needle is on your rig from driving it you know where it normally is when it's at operating temperature so i'm going to start the motor i'm going to let my torque pro app connect to the ecu and right now I know it's not at operating temperature yet. It's only at 163 degrees. So it did cool down a little bit while we were filming the first section. So I'm gonna wait till it gets back up to operating temperature and then we'll do the first test. All right, so according to my Torque Pro app, my coolant temperature is now at the normal operating range. My truck generally runs somewhere between 188 and 192. So I'm gonna put the transmission in neutral I've got my parking brake set, like I said, so my truck can't roll anywhere, and I got the rear wheels chalk, so it can't roll anywhere either. So now let's look at what my RPMs are at at idle. And right now it looks like it's right at about 800 RPMs. So now I'm gonna increase the RPMs to 1,000. I'm gonna hold it there for five seconds, and then we're gonna see if the RPMs returns back to 800 when I take my foot off the accelerator. Okay, one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four, 1,000, five, 1,000. And it returned back to 800 RPMs, so it passed the first test. Now that we finished that first test, the factory service manual says to remove the special service tool from the diagnostic port. So you just pull out the connectors and then close it. The next test is we're gonna inspect the idle air control valve resistance, the ohms resistance. It says, notice, cold and hot in the following sentences express the temperature of the coils themselves. Cold is from negative 10 degrees Celsius or 14 degrees Fahrenheit to 50 degrees Celsius or 122 degrees Fahrenheit. And hot is from 50 degrees Celsius or 122 degrees Fahrenheit to 100 degrees Celsius or 212 degrees Fahrenheit. What I understand that to mean is that it's talking about the temperature of the IAC itself and not necessarily the internal temperature of the engine. So what I'm gonna use is this nifty little infrared thermometer I'm gonna point it at the IEC to get an idea of what temperature the IEC is at. And then I'll reference the factory service manual to see what ohms resistance range the IAC valve should be in. It says for the cold range, it should be somewhere between 17 and 25 ohms. And in the hot range, it should be between 21.5 and 29.5 ohms resistance. The idle air control valve sits on the bottom of the throttle body. This is the throttle body right here. And if you go down below this air tube, I'm pointing at it with my little pointer here, and we need to take off the electrical connector so we can check the ohms resistance. Because it's kind of tight to get in there, we're gonna remove this air tube off the engine to have better access. The first thing I'm gonna do to get this air box off the engine is I'm gonna disconnect this wiring loom. It connects right here and right here. This connection just slips into a little rubber grommet and the tab on this wiring harness is right here. So if I get a flat blade screwdriver, lift up on that grommet a little bit and pull up, I can free it just like that. You can see the little plastic tab that hooks there. This other one has a different style clip. I have to get underneath there with the needle nose pliers and try to compress it so I can push it through. You can see the two little sides here. You have to compress it and pull it through. You might end up mangling a little bit, but that's okay, it's not a big deal. So now the wiring harness is disconnected from the air tube. The next thing I'm gonna remove is this air hose right here. I'm just gonna twist it and free it. 
And now I'm gonna loosen the clamp that attaches the air hose to the throttle body. And then I'm gonna loosen the clamp that attaches the air hose to the air box. I just have a little quarter inch ratchet, short quarter inch extension and a 10 millimeter socket. And I'm gonna loosen these clamps. Okay, that should be loose enough on that side. Now I'm gonna loosen this one. Two other things we need to disconnect is we have this air hose right here. Again, I'm just gonna twist it with my hand and free it. That one's disconnected. And then I'm just gonna slip this one out of its little keeper right here. I'm first gonna pull the air tube off the throttle body. And then I'm gonna feed it off the air box connection. All right, we have our air tube out of the way. So here's the IAC. Here's the electrical connector we have to disconnect. So the push tab is right here. I'm gonna push in and pull back. Now it's disconnected. The factory service manual gives you a diagram of what the connectors are. So from top to bottom, the top one is the RSC, the middle one is the plus B, and then the bottom one is RSO. It says the resistance between the B and the RSC and the B and the RSO should be within those values based off of the temperature of the coils. So I have my little infrared thermometer and I'm gonna point it at the IEC in different spots. So right there it's showing 127 degrees, point at another part of the IEC, about the same temperature, about 128 degrees, 129 degrees. And going back to our factory service manual, that falls into the temperature range of the hot range. And so I should be looking for a value of 21.5 to 29.5 ohms resistance. So now let's use our multimeter to check that. Not all multimeters are gonna look the same. So on this particular multimeter, I have to select the ohms resistance area and that's this area right here. You can tell by this symbol, that's the ohms resistance symbol. So you select a value that's close to the range you're looking for. Since we're looking for a ohms resistance range in the 20s, I'm gonna put it at the 200 max ohms resistance because the meter will be more accurate when you set it up like this. You see that you can set it up for 2000 ohms resistance, 20,000, 200,000, and 2 million. So 200 is the value that's gonna be closest to the value that we are looking for. I have the black connector connect up to the comm, and then I have the red connector connected up to this connection. Okay, so I'm gonna use my red test lead to put it on the middle connector, which is that plus B. I'm first gonna check out the ohms resistance between the plus B and the RSO, and that's the bottom one. So it's giving me a value of 23.2, right about there. So now I'm gonna move the black connector to the top one, which is the RSC. And again, it's giving me similar value, 23.1 23 to 23.2. So now let's go back to the book. So going back to the book, it appears that it did pass the ohms resistance test because since we already know that the temperature of the coils in the IAC or in the hot range, we needed to see that it would be between 21.5 and 29.5. And since it came in right about 23, that shows that it passed the ohms resistance test. So now let's go on to the next test. The next test that we are gonna do is we're gonna check out the air assist hose to make sure that it's not cracked or there's something else wrong with the plumbing that goes from the air assist hose. The factory service manual says to disconnect the air hose and plug it. So to give you a little bit of anatomy of the different hoses that are connected to the bottom of the throttle body, basically the IAC, there's two hoses with a clamp and that's a dead giveaway that those are running coolant through them. So the one that comes from the back of the engine, that's the water hose that goes into the IAC from the intake manifold. The one below it is the air assist hose and that's the one we need to disconnect. If you move forward on the IAC, that's the water bypass hose. We're not gonna mess with those just yet. We're just gonna disconnect 
this air hose that doesn't have a clamp on it and we're gonna plug it. I'm gonna see if I could slip this air hose off just with my hand and not need any type of pick tool to help release it. So let's see how it goes. I'm gonna get my hand on there and pull backwards and see if I can slide it off. It looks like it's not that hard to get off. You can see the hose that I just disconnected and I have the silicone plug kit and I'm gonna see if I find one that will fit in there nicely to block off the hose. So I have this little kit of a bunch of silicone plugs. It looks like this little blue one is gonna work nicely. So I'm just gonna fit this plug right in there. And now it's plugged off. So like the first test that we did to inspect the air assist system, we have to have the engine at its normal operating temperature. We have to have the idle speed checked, make sure it's correct. And we did that in the first test. You have the transmission in neutral and you have the air conditioning off. Since we have to run the engine, I'm gonna have to reconnect the connector for the IEC and I'm gonna have to put the air tube back on. So since the engine sat for a while and got cold, I got the engine back up to operating temperature. I took the plug out of the air assist hose and I reconnected to the IAC, brought the engine back up to operating temperature. And then now what we have to do is we have to do the same thing with the terminal connectors on the diagnostic port. We have to join TE1 and E1 again. So I'm gonna get the terminal connectors connected. Okay, those have a good connection. Now I'm gonna pull the air assist hose back off the IAC and plug it with that silicone plug. Once you know where it's at, then you can basically feel for it. So I know I'm on it because it's the hose that doesn't have a clamp on it. I'm pulling backwards and I'm slipping it off. And then now I have the hose off and I'm gonna take my plug and I'm gonna plug it up. Okay, so now let's go back into the cab and start the motor. So we're going to be seeing that the RPMs reach 500 RPMs or below and the engine might stall. If it doesn't reach that and it's actually acting normal, there could be a problem with the air assist hose, the piping or the injectors. Okay, so I'm going to start the engine. You can see that the engine's barely running. It's like at 300 RPMs. It feels like it's going to stall. So basically it has passed this test. So now we're gonna turn off the motor and go on to the next step. The next step involves removing the throttle body from the engine. So if you know our videos, we've taken the throttle body off for various videos, for the valve cover gasket job, for installing a supercharger. And so it's pretty simple. You have to get the air box off like we already showed. You have to disconnect the electrical connector for the throttle position sensor. You gotta disconnect the electrical connector for the IAC valve. You have to disconnect the water bypass hose the other water hose that comes from the intake manifold, you have to again take off the air assist hose that we just got done testing. You're also gonna have to disconnect the cables. Depending on your year, you're gonna have a different amount of cables. If you have a 96 to 2000, you're gonna have three cables. You're gonna have your transmission kick down cable, you're gonna have the throttle cable, and you're gonna have a cruise control cable. If you have a 2001 to 2002 Forerunner, you're only gonna have one cable. You're just gonna have the throttle cable. So depending on your vehicle, you might have one cable or multiple cables. And then you have to release two nuts and two bolts and you can slide the throttle body off the engine. So I'm gonna start releasing all these cables that attach to the throttle body. I'm gonna use two 14 millimeter wrenches to accomplish this. I'm gonna hold one side firm with one and then I'm gonna break free the back nut with the other wrench. So just an easy turn and then now I could slip this out of its keeper here. Now that it's undone you can curl the cable out of its little channel here 
and then it has a lid in and if you just slide it out like that now the throttle cable is released from the throttle body the next one we're going to disconnect is the transmission kick down same procedure hold one nut with one wrench and then loosen with the other just has to be backed off just a little bit you could slide it out of its keeper again and then you just release the lead plug at the end the last one coming from the passenger side of the engine compartment is the cruise control that's loose slide it out of its keeper and then get the lead plug this one's going to be a little harder for you to see because it's right in here okay now they're all free and the nice thing about these is that you really can't confuse them you know that the one that's going down towards the transmission is the transmission kick down the front most one is the throttle one and then the rear one is the one that is for the cruise control so it'd be hard to mess these up but i guess if you try hard enough you could probably do it i'm going to disconnect the connector to the iac this back one is for the throttle position sensor so the push tab is on the back side push in pull back this vacuum hose is for the throttle position sensor so i'm just going to slide it off of this metal hose that attaches to the top of the plenum so i'm just going to use this little pick tool i'm going to get in between the rubber hose and the metal hose and help break free the connection just rotate it around the whole circumference and then now it's free the two upper nuts and the two bottom bolts are 12 millimeter i'm first going to break them free with a 3 8 ratchet short 3 8 extension deep 12 millimeter socket i'm going to break these free that one's broken free that one's broken free go for the bottom bolt broken free okay now i'm going to transition to my milwaukee ratchet the reason why i break them free first with this gear wrench ratchet is the milwaukee doesn't have very good breaking free strength but what it does well is it shortens the time of removing fasteners nice to have these magnetic parts trays so you can keep track of your fasteners there's one of the bolts should be able just to slide this right off there is the two coolant hoses holding us up but trying to get those constant tension clamps off with the throttle body connected is pretty difficult so we're gonna slide it off these posts and then be able to get at them easier with the uh, needle nose pliers this connector that goes to the middle coil pack is stopping me from being able to draw the throttle body straight back and off these upper posts on the upper plenum so i'm just going to disconnect this and pull it out of the way now i think that's going to give me the room i need to pull it straight back there we go now we have better access to these coolant hoses again this is the water bypass and then the other one is called the water hose that goes to the intake manifold. So I'm gonna get on here with a bent nose, needle nose pliers and remove these. Just know that these have coolant in them, so you're gonna lose a little bit of coolant. I'm gonna utilize a couple of those silicone plugs again and see if I can limit the amount of coolant that comes out and makes a mess on the top of the motor. Okay, so I have my bent nose, needle nose pliers. I'm gonna squeeze the constant tension clamp and slide it back okay that slid off enough let's see if i just could twist it and break this free yeah it looks like it's going to break free fine so i got my little silicone plug ready i'm going to pull it off and then turn it upright so i lose less coolant there's going to be a little bit of coolant in the iac also okay i got that one plugged off now i'm going to work on the next one while we're here this is something to note guys that do a valve cover gasket job have managed to make a mistake and hook up one of the coolant lines where the vacuum hose goes more than one guy has done this we 
hear about it on the Toyota forums. Make note of this that the two coolant lines are the upper ones and the lowest most one is the air assist line. So again, get my needle nose pliers, compress the constant tension clamp and slide it back. Okay, see if this one's gonna break free for me. Yep, it's sliding off. Oh, that one had a little more coolant coming out. I'm gonna plug this one. Okay, now we have the throttle body completely disconnected from the engine. All right, so we have the throttle body captured in my bench vise. We have the IAC valve pointing upwards, and you can see that it's held onto the throttle body with four screws. Now, a lot of people think that these are just regular Phillips head screws, but with Japanese engines, the screws are actually a JIS screw. JIS stands for Japanese Industrial Standard. A regular US made Phillips screwdriver isn't gonna fit the heads of JIS screws as well as a true JIS screwdriver will. I have this JIS screwdriver that I bought from Vessel via Amazon and I'm gonna use that to break these screws free. Now, these screws are known to be on very tight and people have been known to strip them out. You wanna use enough downward pressure. You wanna make sure that the tip you're using gets a really nice bite with the head of the screw and do your level best not to strip it. So I'm gonna push down with a lot of firm pressure and turning counterclockwise at the same time to see if I can break this free without stripping it. Okay, I got the first one loose, second one loose, third one loose, and the fourth one loose. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take these out the rest of the way. Okay, and our IAC valve should come off. Maybe just a little shimmy here. Break free the gasket. There we go. Here's the bottom side of the IAC valve that you never get to see. And then you can see the gasket right here that we're gonna be replacing. Now we're gonna test to see that the IAC valve closes and opens by jumping it with 12 volts power. For our 12 volt power source, what I'm using is this battery jumper. This one's made by DB Power. These are really handy to bring along with you on road trips or basically anywhere you go. Say for instance, you accidentally left a dome light on or your radio on and you have a dead battery. These things are super strong and can jump a totally dead battery. Nice thing to have. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect up the little jumper cables that comes with the kit. And then it has a power switch I'm gonna turn the power on. And so now I have power. Now what I'm gonna use is some connectors. These are connectors that I bought on Amazon. You can hook them up to a multimeter or you can use them for different applications like this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use these connectors to connect up to the jumper cables. So I'm gonna connect up the black one to the black one. And for right now, I'm not gonna connect up the positive one. Looking at the factory service manual again, the middle prong on the IAC valve is the one that needs to get the positive power. So we're gonna hook the red lead up to that. And then we're gonna check two different functions. When we connect it up to the bottom one, which is the RSO, we're gonna see that the valve opens. And then when we connect the negative lead to the RSC, which is the top connector, we're gonna see that the valve is closed. This kit I bought has these nice little cute connectors. Since the prongs on the electrical connection are pretty close together, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a little piece of cardboard in between the connectors just to make sure that they can't connect and ground out on each other. I'm gonna hook up the red one first to the middle prong. Okay, that's connected. I'm gonna stick a little piece of cardboard, basically it came from a business card, and I'm gonna slide that on this side. Then I'm gonna grab my black connector and connect it up to the RSO pin. Okay, they're both connected. Now with this DB power thing, you see that this thing is flashing? You have to push this little button and get it to be a solid green. 
Okay, now it's solid green. Now let's go back to the IAC and where you wanna be looking is right there. You're gonna see that little hatch open when I give it power. See how it opened? I'll do it again. There it is, so it's opening like it should. So we just tested that the IAC valve properly opens. Now let's see that it properly closes. We still have the red lead connected to the middle prong, and now we have our negative test lead connected up to the top prong, which is the RSC. Now, as it sits, you can see that there is a, just a little bit of daylight between the little IAC door and the body. When I give it power, it's gonna try to close a little bit more. It's gonna move a little bit. You can see that, that it's trying to move. So yeah, it does look like it's closing properly. So the IAC valve has passed both tests. So now we're gonna use our throttle body cleaner. We're gonna clean this out. There's a lot of black gunk in there. Right now, the door of the IAC valve is in the closed position or mostly closed position. So I'm just gonna spray it in there, maybe get a Q-tip and help get some of the gunk off. The black gunk doesn't seem to want to come off very well, so I'm going to work at this a little bit. So you can see I have a little bit of it cleaned off to where now it's shiny and not black. So if you take Q-tips and you rub it on there, you can get that black gunk off. So I'm just going to be spraying throttle body cleaner, getting in here with clean Q-tips, and see if I can get a lot of this carbon buildup out of the inside of the IAC. Okay, I'm done with cleaning it. You can see now... It's pretty darn clean. I just kept on spraying throttle body cleaner in there and used a Q-tip to wipe it out. After cleaning it, I wanted to make sure that it's still properly working and I got a little scare because when I hooked up the original connectors and gave it power, nothing was happening. And I thought that I maybe fried it by spraying the throttle body cleaner in there. It ends up the cables went bad on me for some reason. So I switched to a different set of cables and lo and behold, it worked like it should. It opened when I connected up the connectors properly and it closed when I connected up the connectors properly. So it is still working. With that said, maybe it's not a good idea to spray a bunch of throttle body cleaner in here. Maybe what's better is you just spray a little bit on a rag or spray it on the end of the Q-tip and then wipe in there and then repeat the process. I don't know if there's a chance you could short this thing up, but if you have experience with this and you have sprayed throttle body cleaner in here like I did and it wasn't an issue, then let me know. When I was investigating why the IAC wasn't working, I did clean off some gray sealant around these two JIS screws and I removed this just to see what I can see. Then I put it back together. So I'm just gonna take some Toyota FIPG and reseal these. Now I'm gonna spray a bunch of throttle body cleaner inside the throttle body and clean it up really nice. Okay, I'm done cleaning the throttle body. Depending on how meticulous, or another term is anal, is gonna depend on how long you spend on this. Especially on this side where the IAC connects to the throttle body. You have this port here, you have this port here, you have this area in here, and then you have this area down in here. So I sprayed throttle body cleaner in there and I just got in there with a multitude of Q-tips and I wiped out as much black gunk that I could. Cleaning this area of the throttle body bore is a lot easier. And what you wanna do is you wanna work the throttle plate and get to the spots that you can't get to with the throttle plate closed. So you wanna turn it, spray some cleaner in there, and then wipe out any black residue that's basically right at the edge of where it closes. And do that on the top and the bottom. So now I'm gonna get the IAC back connected to the throttle body with a new gasket. So I have the throttle body back captured with my bench vise and I'm gonna fit this new gasket in place. It's kind of a round gasket, similar to what the valve cover gasket is. And you could only get it in one way. It doesn't look like it matters which way you put it on. Both sides look identical. So I'm just gonna fit this on here and set it in its groove. Now I'm gonna get the IAC back 
down on top of it and you can see the way it's shaped here and the way it's shaped here it needs to go on in this fashion and now I'm gonna grab my screws and I'm gonna get the screws started so I have all the screws touched down now I'm just gonna give them a quarter turn opposing corners crisscrossing and slowly bring it down firm okay they seem to be all touched down firm now I'm gonna apply some more force by putting good downward pressure and I'm gonna get these tight there's no torque spec for this because I don't even think you can get a screw to a torque spec unless there's some type of special torque wrench I don't know about I'm gonna give each one now a firm turn crisscrossing again I'm gonna do one more pass okay that's good the IAC is now back onto the throttle body with a brand new gasket I'm gonna take my old gasket off. Now, there's a good chance that you could probably reuse a gasket like this. It's a metal gasket, but just to play it safe that I don't get a vacuum leak, I'm gonna replace this. I'm just gonna spray a little bit of throttle body cleaner on a rag, and I'm gonna clean this surface up. okay that's clean enough good enough for government work I'm gonna get my new gasket in place you can see that this thing could only go on one way you see this little appendage right here that points downward and so the cutoff part of the full circle is on this side like a partial moon slide that in place the next thing we're gonna do to reverse our order is we're gonna get this coolant bypass hose reconnected to the throttle body and we're gonna get the water hose which goes to the intake manifold reconnected I'm gonna start with this one remember don't make the mistake of getting the coolant hoses in the wrong position don't hook up one of the coolant hoses to where the air hose goes to so take the plug out and slide it over the IAC connection then I'm gonna get my bent nose needle nose pliers and get the clamp back in place slide it along there we go okay that one's back in place now I'm gonna get the water hose behind in place pull the plug out slide it over the IAC connection and then get that clamp in place okay that clamps back in place while I'm here I'm just gonna take the plug out of the air hose and I'm gonna slide that over the connection on the IAC now that all those are connected I'm gonna rotate this in place and get the throttle body slid over the studs I take that back hooking up the air hose first makes it hard to get the throttle body slid back over the studs on the plenum so I'm gonna leave it disconnected right now slide it in place now I can slide the air bypass hose on okay the air bypass hose is back on now I'm gonna get the two nuts and the two bolts in place that hold the throttle body onto the plenum so I'm gonna get one of my nuts started I'll get the other one started and then I'll get the bolt started I'm gonna utilize my little extension and 12 millimeter deep socket to get them hand tight I'm gonna to transition to my gear wrench ratchet and just snug them up a little bit more and I'm doing a crisscrossing pattern okay they're all snugged up and now I'm gonna to transition to my torque wrench the torque spec for the nuts and the bolts that hold the throttle body to the plenum is 13 foot-pounds Okay, they all hit I'm just gonna double check okay the two upper nuts and the two lower bolts are torqued to 13 foot-pounds the next thing I'm gonna do is reconnect some of the connectors I disconnected so remember I disconnected this connector for this middle coil pack so I can slide the throttle body off so I'm gonna reconnect that 
push it till it snaps and pull back. Make sure that it's on there firm. I'm going to reconnect the connection for the IAC. That's on there. I'm going to reconnect the connector for the throttle position sensor. Okay, those are all reconnected. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get all my cables back reconnected. I'm going to reverse my procedure and the last one I took off was the one for the cruise control. I'm first going to get the lead end back into the spot that it lives. If I turn this, I can get access to it easier. I could fit it in there and then I could let it rotate back and then have the cable in the channel and then I could pull it back and get that back in position. The next one I'm going to go for is the transmission kick down cable. This one I can't turn to make it easier on me because it turns this way. So I'm just going to pull on the cable, get the lead end in there, fit it in, and then put it back in place. And I'm going to slide it over its post again, just like that. The last one we're going to do is the throttle cable. I'm going to make it easier by turning it, fitting it in, and then let it rotate back. And then I'm going to slide it back over its little bracket. One thing to note that some people do, and what I did on this truck a while back when I did the valve cover gasket job, is these cables can develop a little play. So by messing with the adjustment of these two 14 millimeter nuts, you can take slack out of these cables. So that's an option while you're doing this job. I've already done this, so I'm just gonna lock them back down in place with my two 14 millimeter box end wrenches. Again, hold one side firm and tighten the other one. Make sure it slid all the way down in this bracket. Okay, that one's tight, that one's tight. And then finally, let's do this cruise control one. Okay, they're all cinched up. Now I'm gonna reconnect this vacuum hose that's for the throttle position sensor. I'm gonna slide that back over its post just like that. Now I need to get my air box tube back in. So I'm going to slide it in here, rotate it into position here. I'm going to get it on the air box side first. Then I'm going to get it onto the throttle body. Now I'm just going to grab my little quarter inch ratchet and a 10 millimeter socket and I'm going to cinch these up. Okay, that one's nice and tight. I'm going to cinch this one up now that attaches the air tube to the air box. Okay, those are both cinched up. I'm going to get some of the other tubes reconnected. So I slid this one off to get the air box off. I'm going to slide this back over. This tube right here just snaps back into this little keeper. I'm going to get this one connected back up to the air tube. And I'm gonna get my wiring harness back connected. So I've gotta slip this clip in right here. And then I gotta slip this one back in. That looks like everything is reconnected and now we're ready to start the engine and make sure everything's working like it should. Just do a final check and make sure you didn't leave any tools on top of your engine that could maybe fall into the belts and ruin your day. Let's take a quick look, make sure you see everything reconnected like it should. Okay, it looks good. I'm gonna try to start it up and see how it goes. I'm gonna let the engine warm up and then make sure that it's idling properly once the engine is at operating temperature. All right, so my engine is back up to operating temperature. You could see the top left value there. My engine temperature or coolant temperature is at 186. And you could see that my idle returned back to 800 which is what it normally idles at so everything looks good all right we're all done with this job we showed you how you can test and clean the iac on your toyota 3.4 liter v6 engine the first test we did was with the iac on the engine and then we also did a test to make sure everything in regards to the air assist hose is intact so there's no vacuum leak in the hose and the piping that's what we're talking about when we're testing that finally we took the throttle body off the engine we disconnected the IAC from the throttle body 
and we did another test by applying 12 volts of power in a couple different situations, making sure the little door opens and it closes. Finally, we showed how you can clean the IAC valve and clean the throttle body with some throttle body cleaner. When it comes to cleaning out that IAC valve, I'm still not 100% sure that it's really good to spray the cleaner directly in there. Maybe it can mess up the electronics of the little solenoid, but if you're gonna spray it in there, what I would do is I would hold the electrical connector pointing upwards, spraying the cleaner in there to where it's gonna drain down and not drain possibly into that electrical connector and maybe short something out. That's the scenario I was thinking that possibly happened when these cables decided to give out on me. Just be aware of that and don't potentially short out your IAC. So spray some throttle body cleaner in there, get in there with some clean Q-tips and wipe out some gunk, and then keep on repeating that process till it looks really clean. The main thing that I think is the most important thing is making sure that there's not a bunch of gunk built up on the little door to where it could hang up. So if there's a lot of carbon built up on there, maybe it could get stuck closed or it could get stuck open. So that's the most important part of the cleaning process is to make sure that that door is nice and clean and can't hang up either direction. When it comes to cleaning out the throttle body, that's a little bit easier, but there are some little nooks and crannies you can really get anal about and get in there with Q-tips and make sure everything's perfect. You know, if you're kind of have OCD or super anal, then clean it till your heart's content. You could spend days on it if you want. I don't suggest doing that, but do whatever floats your boat. If you were watching this video to pick up some tips on another type of motor, I hope it helped you out. I don't think the ohms resistance and all the other tests we did would translate obviously because you're talking a different motor, but some of the steps we did to test the IAC function might translate to other motors. I'm not 100% sure. With all that said, we thank you for watching Toyota Time with Timmy the Toolman and Sean. We'll be back with more videos. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you have any questions or comments, do that below. Take care. Bye-bye. Sick mods and sick do-it-yourself ranching people. Peace out. Bye-bye.